Central headquarter on a full time the city of Calgary beginning next year. Starting goaltender for Team Canada will be Daryl Trakalo as you watch the Soviets Moscow Dynamo team roll by. Vitaly Davidov, the head coach of the team. And there's young Daryl Trakalo. He celebrated his 22nd birthday with a victory. In goal for the Soviets, it'll be Mikhail Vasilnuk. His goals against average is 3.81. He's the veteran of the Soviet goaltending tandem at 36 years old. Some new players for Canada defensively. There are three new defensemen lining up in their first appearance for Canada. Near the bottom of the order, 22 McLaren, 26 Ramsey, and 27 Anderson are all new members of Team Canada. In total, eight players will see first action for the Team Canada 85 at Calgary in game eight. The referee is Jim Beckman and the rest of the officiating staff, Mark Nerland and Dan Emerson. Now, Dan Emerson is a very tall linesman, Darcy. I have no idea how tall he is, but he's got to be over 6'6". He's the tallest person on the ice, John. Be anxious to see whether or not the Soviet Union play the five combination they did in Toronto in game seven. They did not play four players all game. Here's some of the University of Alberta players will be lining up for Team Canada, Tim Krug, Harry Prophet, and Dennis Cranston. And also from the University of Calgary, Brent Meckling and Paul Geddes, number six and 22. From Colorado College, Doug Clark on defense, number four. From the University of Denver, Ian Ramsey and Dave Anderson. And from the University of Wisconsin, Victor Poza, along with Scott Mellonby, number 19. All those players are added to Team Canada's roster for the first time in, uh, in the series. And uh, we'll expect uh, some interesting matchups as they take on the Soviets' Moscow Dynamo for the first time. Dynamo around Vasilnuk. He played in Maple Leaf Gardens in game seven of this series. And Vasilnuk came up a 4-3 loser on that particular occasion. We're just about ready for the face-off. All the official festivities out of the way, and this is the Saddle Dome in Calgary, home of the Calgary Flames. And three years and a couple of months from now, it will be the scene of the 1988 Olympic Games, and some young members of this Team Canada aggregation will be taking part in the Olympic Games representing Canada. For the Soviets, Darutnov in with a blistering shot, and Trakalo the save. Good save by Trakalo. On Ferutnov, it's down to the Soviet zone. After it down there is Mike Ridley, number 14 for Canada. The Indian team very aggressive in the last couple of games. We'll see what they've got in mind in this one. This is Ridley coming around from behind. Can't sweep it in front. Here come the Soviets, led by Basikov. Over on the left side for Ferutnov. He couldn't handle it. In behind his own goal for Canada. Tim Krug, number two, ahead for Ridley. He let it go by for Newell Brown. Brown over to an open right wing. And in across the line for Canada, Darren Lowe. Lowe couldn't control it in the Soviet zone. Now offside, called against Team Canada that time. It was Paul Geddes poking it in with Darren Lowe caught in across the Soviet line. Good look at Paul Geddes from Calgary. He's playing his first game tonight for Team Canada, and he's got a big black eye there that he, that he suffered playing for the University of Calgary the other night. Base off is into the Soviet zone. Backboard, Mikulchuk ahead on the left side. And for Canada, Benoit Doucette called offside at the Canadian line. There's your pal Davidoff. He's quite an interesting character. He's got a nice personality, and uh, he always seems to have a few words for me at practice. Any advice? <laughs> he just says no, no coach needed for this team. And Captain Canada, Dave King, just down the way from the Soviets' bench. Face off in the Canadian zone. Golikov takes a shot, and it's deflected high over the glass. Face off will be in the Team Canada zone. Dave King's been very happy with the output of his players so far. And after tonight's game, we've used 47 players that uh, are vying for Olympic spots. And there's a few more to come in the final two games of the series. Trakalo hanging on to that one. The shot from Mikulczyk. Really a weak drive, but there were Soviets around track low that time, so he decided to hang on in the Team Canada net. Both teams now decide wholesale changes are in order. There's the captain, Vladimir Golikov. He has three goals and four assists for seven points in the series so far. 30-year-old captain of the Moscow Dynamo. He's been very impressive throughout. He, 
He played the 1981 Canada Cup. Face off is to the left of Trackalo and goal for Canada. Head on the right side for Dave Anderson, 27. It's out across the line. Ian Ramsey for Canada now. Working out in front. It's back to the pointer, headed in that direction. It didn't get quite through to Brent Buckling. And the Soviets on the attack once more. pre wrote number 27, man out in front. And the Kulinen was there, couldn't take a pass. Head on the left side for Dave Simpson. Back across the Soviet line. Gordon, head on the right side for the Moscow Dynamo. In behind his own goal, Brent Muckling. And we have a whistle. Time out at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. Scoreless in the first. John Wells along with Darcy Rhoda. This is the Saddle Dome in Calgary. And the formal name is the Olympic Saddle Dome. Built as a home for the Calgary Flames in one sense, Darcy, but uh, also much of the funding to make that possible was because of the 1988 Olympic Games here in Calgary. Just over three years away now. Play from the center ice area. Flipped into the Soviet zone. Peyusov, number two, ahead of the right side. This is Antipov. Antipov stopped, fired it wide. Right out in front, deflected just wide of the net. Slipchenko, number 24, fired that one for the Soviets. Team Canada to the attack once more. Led this time by Dennis Cranston. Cranston into the corner and around behind the net. Picked up over there by Tim Krug. Soviets regaining possession in their own zone. Right wing pass on the far side for Zubrilchev. He's ridden out of the play. Into the corner for Canada, Perry Prop, number seven. Round behind the boards for Darren Lowe, 21. Into the center ice zone where the Soviets take control once more. It's Varianov, number 12. Now Skurdek. Still with the puck, Skurdek to the Canadian line and across, getting set, gets ready for the shot, track it all the save. Canadian team defense seemed to uh, lull to sleep there for a moment, thinking Skurdak would likely pass it off. Big save by Trakalo, and when the Soviets are circling in the end, you've got to be, make sure you don't back up too much, and that's what happened here. Skurdak came in, and the Kane defense backed up too far, but Trakalo made a great glove save. Couple of big saves for Daryl Trakalo already. Face off to his left in the Canadian zone. 16-29 to play in the opening period. Still scoreless at the saddle dome. Harry Prop for Canada. Prop into the center ice area, taken by Mike Ridley. Ridley gets it ahead. And at the Soviet line, broken up neatly. Canada in possession, neutral territory. This is Ridley over on the left side for Newell Brown. Brown tried to get it ahead for Darren Lowe. Soviets start back. Varianov over on the left side. This is Perutnov. Perutnov hasn't taken out his stick. Now claims it once more. Out to the points. Vazikov, the shot, the save. Back to Vazikov once more. Winds up with a shot, Trakalo once more. And already several big saves for Daryl Trakalo. Trakalo looks very sharp tonight. His parents drove all the way from Winnipeg for this game. But a few parents around. Watching aspiring members of Team Canada. Into the Canadian zone, Francois Sills leaves it there for Benoit Doucette. Line mates for Team Canada, line mates at the University of Moncton. Canadians in the center ice area. Doucette couldn't handle the pass. Semenov for the Soviets for Mikulchik. And quickly ahead for Zabrelchev at the Canadian line. Balderas, Balderas tried to get it through for Golikov. Golikov couldn't claim it. This is Francois Sill, number 11 for Canada. Sill leaving it there for Doug Clark. He wears number four. Now Brent Meckling along the boards, working there with Paul Geddes. And they hold it for a face-off, the Team Canada zone. 14-48 to play in period one, still scoreless in Calgary. Face-off in the Canadian zone to the left of Trackalo this time. Akulinen got the draw for the Soviets in around behind the Canadian goal. He's ridden up. Now ahead on the right side for Team Canada, this is Dave Anderson. 
Anderson can't get it out of the Canadian zone. Jammed along the boards and held there. Now flipped in behind the net. Serge Roy after it for Canada. Roy going against Free Road, number 27 for the Moscow Dynamo, right out in front. And it was claimed there by Dave Anderson. Anderson had it taken off his stake by Free Road. Soviets trying to control in the Canadian zone. This is Sasha. He lost it. Into the center ice area, head on the right side, intended for Anderson. And now the left side. Working in, Serge Roy. Roy written out of the play by Mazikov. Soviets quickly to the attack. Over on the right side, Sashov winds up with a shot. That off the skate. And well wide of Trakalo on the Canadian goal. Akulinen for the Soviets. In behind his own line. Payusov now. Soviets. Changing on the go. Long pass on the right side. And just a little bit too far for Zabrelchev. Icing called against the Moscow Dynamo. Well, the Soviets had their fourth line out there that did not play in Game 7 in Toronto, and they had a very good shift there. So it looks like right now that the Dynamo will go with four lines. It was three the other nights at get Maple Leaf Garden. Get a look to Victor Pozar, a, a draft choice this year from University of Wisconsin, and what we understand, he'll go very high this year. And he's in his first game for Team Canada. Along with schoolmate Scott Mellonby, number 19. Mellonby is out there right now. Mellonby with a puck. Forced off it along the boards. Now the Soviets to the attack. Lots of skating room for Antipov. Team Canada defense standing up well, clearing it to the center ice area. Mellonby is after it. Worked against Slipchenko that time. Soviets. Led now by Zabrelchev, number 18. Zabrelchev working himself right out in front. Good save by Trakalo. As Zabrelchev skated right in front of the Canadian goal. Now for Canada, Von Carpet. Carpet takes a return pass. The shot right on and the save by Masselnuk. Canadians after it in the Soviet zone. Clear to the open wing by the Dynamo, Zabrelchev. Back to his own line for Peyuzov. He hasn't taken off his stick. And Newell Brown skates in, 17 for Canada. Brown cleared it right to the front of the goal. Vassal looked to save, and the faceoff will be in Dynamo territory. Good shift by Canada there. They've got so many new players in the lineup, John. When you've got new players, they've struggled a little bit offensively. The main thing is go out there and talk. Communication is such a big thing. Well, Dave King has had a very happy crew with Team Canada. No doubt about that. Big save here. Zubachev cuts in. Big save by Trakalo. Faceoff comes outside the Soviet line. Verutnov. After it, he was steered off the puck by Heckling, number six. Trakalo had to come out and cover up on that one. Good play by Brent Meckling. He's from the University of Calgary, just 20 years old. One of eight new players in the Canadian team lineup. For this, the eighth game in the Moscow Dynamo series. Soviets lead the series five wins to two. They won the opening five games. Canada has won two in a row in Ottawa and in Toronto. Into the Soviet zone. After it is Sills. And beating him to the puck, Kovacin. Cleared ahead on the right side. Back forward is Tim Krug for Canada. Krug plays it behind for Doucette. Back for the Soviets, Kovacin. Can't clear it out of his own zone. This is Sills to Doucette. Doucette couldn't get a shot away. Now Skurduk for the Soviets. With Faradukin on the left. Skurduk. Stops in across the line, fires it in behind the goal. Varianov back there, cleared it out in front. And Doucette for Canada. Continues his aggressive play. Now ahead for Sills. Sills. Tried the left wing pass for Geddes, and Geddes was a stride offside. Still scoreless, opening period in Calgary. Face off will be just outside the Soviet line. From there, it's cleared in across the Canadian blue line. And back for it is Perry Prop. Prop stopping behind his own net. He's from Barhead, Alberta. 
currently playing with the University of Alberta Golden Bears. Break for the Soviets in across the line. This is Balderas. Balderas into the corner. Stops and feeds it back to the point. Getting set for the shot back there. It's in. Good shot by Mikulczak, number 16. And it seemed to hit something and deflect high into the goal. Fine shot by Mikulczak there. The Canadians did not force the Mikulczak at all. No one came to me, just walked in, walked in, and just teed her up and let her fly. You've got to force him at the blue line there. And you notice he just could walk in all alone and just tee that baby up. And then might have been screened a bit at Trackalo on that goal. So it's 1-0 for the Moscow Dynamo. This is game eight of the series. Good scoring opportunity for the Soviets once more. Left alone in front of the Canadian net. And the Soviets come up with it. Working right in this time. Great save by Trackalo. Out in front, loose puck once more and Trackalo. On to Roden, big save as the Soviets have moved. Mikulczyk has the goal. And it's tied up along the, or in the mesh behind Trackalo. 8.58 the time of the goal. That's Mikulczyk's first goal of this series. And uh, he's also leading the penalties in this tournament with 12 minutes. 20 years old, uh, kind of a feisty guy that sticks his nose in the action. 10 minutes, 31 seconds to play in the opening period. This is the Saddle Dome in Calgary. And from the faceoff, the Soviets. Slipchenko into the Canadian zone. Back for it, Mechling. Mechling for Canada. Played it back around behind his own net and takes a return pass now. Mechling, good pass at the blue line. And ahead of the left wing, Canada on the attack with the Soviets back quickly to cover up. That's Antipov, number 25. See how quickly the Soviets can turn it around going in this time. And Ferov into the corner. Picked up there by Zaprelchev. And for Canada, it's Doug Clark looking for someone on the left side. No one was there. Soviets back. Slipchenko into the center ice zone once more. Slipchenko ahead for and Ferov and Ferov across the line. And he left it there for Slipchenko, number 24. This is another Soviet goal as Zabrelchev worked in number 18 and went to the backhand on Trakolo. Oh, the Soviets move the puck so well here. Goes to Zubachev in the corner here. Makes a nice little move. The Canadian defender goes down. He throws it high in the top corner to beat Trakolo. The Canadians are not forcing the Soviets. They've got to get on them much more quicker. Makes a nice move and throws it high over the glove. Canadian defense looked to be a little sleepy on that play, Darcy. They let Zabrelchev work in quite close, and he went to the backhand when he got there. So it's 2-0 for the Moscow Dynamo, leading Team Canada. 9.34 to play in period one. Another Soviet attack here. Marut Rutnov takes the shot. Trakalo, the save. And Team Canada starts back. Pass ahead on the right side. This is Darren Lowe over to the left side. For Newell Brown, Brown into the corner. And written off the puck by Bozikov, number four. Skuridak gets it out across the Soviet blue line. Canada claims it there. Newell Brown in across the line. Brown waiting for his opportunity. Ahead for Darren Lowe behind the net. Lowe can't come up with it. Soviets move quickly once more. Bozikov ahead to Skuridak. Skuridak open in front. Track below the save and covered up quickly. Skurdak was alone out in front for that shot, but couldn't come up with it. Trakalo had it covered. Nice play here by Vozakov in front. Trakalo makes a big save. And back to the live action now. The Soviets got the draw, but Team Canada comes out of its own zone. Going right in, Sills. Couldn't, or rather, Doucette couldn't get the shot away as Basilnook was down. Dynamo can't control it the center ice area. This is Perry Proft from the University of Alberta, dumped into the Soviet zone by Geddes, number 20. Soviets claim it back there. Two quick goals by the Moscow Dynamo. They lead it two to nothing with 8.13 to play in the first period. Right now, the Canadians have a tough time getting anything going offensively. They gotta get the puck in deep there, bump the body because the Soviets are very vulnerable when you can get on them and press them. You look at Francois Sills. He's the leading goal getter for Team Canada with seven, a University of Moncton student. 
And his line mate and partners had a pretty good series as well. That's Benoit Doucette. Six goals and four assists for 10 points. They've been the most productive forwards on Team Canada throughout this series. In the face-off circle, Dave Simpson, the Team Canada captain. Simpson got the draw, but not back to a Canadian player as the Soviets, led by Pre-Roden, start back. Pre-Roden shot well wide. This is Akulina, number eight, working along the boards. Lost it to Simpson. The Pre-Roden is in to dig it out for the Soviets once more. Around from behind, Mikulchek. Still has the puck, working himself out in front. The shot right on, the save by Trakalo. Into the corner for Canada. Doug Clark around behind his own goal. And Canada with Anderson clearing it into the Soviet zone. That's number 27, Dave Anderson. Shadow on the Soviet defender by Dave Simpson. Anderson, number 27, a good check on Soviet player in behind the play. Falling down in Farah, but he got the pass away anyway. Trakalo taken out of the play as far as Canada was concerned. And fortunately, Soviets did not have a good scoring opportunity because of it. Scott Mellonby along the boards. And they hold it there for a face-off right in front of the Canadian team bench. This Soviet line just came off the ice. As I mentioned earlier, did not play in Toronto. We'll get a look at Mr. Roy. Played very well for Team Canada. And I feel like anybody that plays in the National Hockey League doesn't play much. They get a chance to play. They want to prove to their coach they can play. Good look at the good hit here by Dave Anderson, the younger brother, Glenn Anderson, from the Edmonton Oilers. And Glenn Anderson was a member of the Canadian Olympic team a couple of years back. That was 1980. And on the right side for Canada, this is Tim, or rather, uh, Serge Roy, number three, going in. Roy into the corner for Mellonby. Mellonby tried to work it out in front. Comes up with it again. Back to the point. Good pass back there for Krug. Krug shot blocked by the Soviets. And there's a penalty coming up. And it'll go against the Moscow Dynamo. So Team Canada will have its first power play opportunity. Slipchenko will go off for two minutes for tripping. As we see Slipchenko there, uh, he's played very well in this series, 27 years old. The Soviet team, as we see here, you'll see the trip come up here, right there, takes the feet from under Cranston. The Soviet team is much more older than the Canadian oh, team. Canada needs a goal here in the worst way. They, their main play is to get it back to the point, let it fly, go for any rebounds, deflections. They've been very effective on the deflections in this series. And along the boards, that's Newell Brown, 17, getting it in behind the Soviet goal. Now Brown along the boards, working against two Dynamo players. And they hold it there for a face-off. Six minutes, 15 seconds to play in the opening period. The Dynamo leading Team Canada. Two to nothing. Look at Newell Brown, who is signed by Ferguson Express. He's on a 25-game trial right now. He's played 21 of them. This is Popakin for the Soviets. Ahead for Skurduk. He can't get it out across the line. Now for Canada, Darren Lowe fails. And going back, Brent Meckling. Meckling from the University of Calgary, 20 years old, lining up for Team Canada for the first time. And this is the eighth game of the Moscow Dynamo Series. Canadians on the power play, flipped in across the Soviet line by Brown, and flipped high into the stands from the corner. So the faceoff will be in the Soviet zone. The Soviets are always a threat to score when they're shorthanded, and they force you all over the ice. You've got to be very aware of them going in the offense when they get control of the puck. Especially out now with Golikov and Balderas, they're always a threat to uh, any time during the game to score. There's Paul Geddes, native of Calgary, attending the University of Calgary. Still a minute 10 left to the penalty, kept in by Canada at the point, into the corner now. This is Doucette, back to the point. There's Serge Roy winding up the shot right on. Vassal look to save. Doucette comes up with it again, right out in front. Here's Doucette, one more try, and a massive Soviet player is in front of the goal. Doucette never really got a chance to get that final shot away. He just couldn't quite get the handle on that. 
and Mikulczyk covered up right here. He just couldn't quite control it that well. Tried to go to his backhand, and the Soviet defender covered up. Actually, the play was made by Mikulczyk because the goaltender, Vasilnuk, never really had to make that save. 52 seconds left in the penalty, and there's another Soviet going off right now, number 16, Mikulczyk. Moscow Dynamo penalty. I guess they ruled that he didn't pull it underneath him, Darcy. He grabbed it with his glove and pulled it under his body, so he'll go off for two minutes. So Canada, with a two-man advantage, five skaters to three. He said it was crucial before on the power play. It's critical right now for Canada to get back into the game in the first period. Come up with something here. Back to the point. Newell Brown into the corner. Shot right on. Vassal looked the save and covered up. Vasilnuk is 36 years old. Good play by Sills here. He tries to go upstairs with it. The Vasilnuk makes stands his ground, makes a good save off the shoulder. So Trick him up a bit. 46 seconds left of the penalty to Slipchenko. And Mikulchuk out for delay of game. Still has 154 remaining in his. Into the corner. This is Francois Sills. Back to the point for Newell Brown. Over to the near side for Serge Roy. He can't get a shot away. Soviets dump it out. And back into Canadian territory. Newell Brown, 17, back for Canada. 29 seconds left in one penalty, a minute 35 left in the other. Canadians to the attack with a two-man advantage of the Moscow Dynamo. For the Soviet line and across into the corner four. Here's Roy coming up with it, fired it just wide. Over on the far side for Newell Brown. Brown played it in for Geddes. Now back for Serge Roy, his shot blocked. Five seconds left in one penalty. Roy still has it to the corner. Back for Roy. Canadians are not shooting. Now one Soviet player is back on. That one fired just wide of the Soviet target. And the Dynamo back to just one man short. Big shift by Pulpikin, but the Soviets blocked a shot, made a big hit at the blue line. Here's Newell Brown for Team Canada, trying to feed it through over on the left side for Dave Anderson. Couldn't get it through. Soviets all the way down the ice. Deep that time with Doug Clark. And Clark got it in across the Soviet line. Good chance for Team Canada here, working in closely was Prof. Prof. Couldn't control it. And it's back down into the Canadian zone. 17 seconds remain in the Canadian power play. Over on the right side for Simpson. Into the corner after it. And they jam it along the boards. In there, Dave Anderson. Does look a little bit like big brother Glenn of the Edmonton Oilers, doesn't he? Looks, I mean, look like twins, and uh, he's at Denver University in his fourth year of business management. A Burnaby, BC native. On the season at Denver University, 12 goals and 10 assists, 22 points. Three seconds left in the penalty to Mikulczyk. Well, Team Canada has their best face-off man out there. And Dave Simpson, let's see if he gets the draw. He's doing a great job all series on it. Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada 2 to nothing. This is Simpson. Or rather, Ramsey in around behind the net. Simpson is out in front, cleared all the way down by the Soviets. The time has expired in the penalty. And Mikulczyk was the first man down. Good chance for the Soviets. They fired in. That time, Antipov went to the backhand and had Trakalo well out of the play. It is 3-0. Well, Mikulczyk came out of the penalty box, was the first man down the ace to touch it. As you see there, he throws it out and goes across to Antipov, and he just walks in, makes a nice little backhand deke and throws it in the open net. Trakalo actually committed himself, but uh, really he had not much other chance. Yes, he, he came out at him and was left out of position, but uh, that resulted because Mikulczyk came out of the penalty box you have to wonder if the Soviets knew that and they ace the puck on it. So he get to the puck first. Another chance for the Soviets working in right out in front. Baryanov couldn't get a good shot away. Now for Team Canada, Dennis Cranston leads the attack down the left side. And across the line, can't control it there. This is Mellonby for Canada. 
after it cleared to the point. And down the ice, Tim Krug goes back for it. Behind the Canadian goal. Buffed off the puck is Cranston. He falls to the ice. Soviets controlling in the Canadian zone. 3-0 Moscow Dynamo back to the point. And kept in there by Durden. Durden shot. Handled by Trakalo. And the Canadians dump it down the Soviet zone. Right now the Canadians are very tight. They gotta get the puck in deep, do a little forechecking, bump the Soviets, which they do not like at all. Shot fired just wide by Varianov. Wide of the Canadian net once more, claimed by Serge Roy. Canadians in the center ice area, Newell Brown's pass. Failed to connect with his left winger. Long shot, pass and look. Let it bounce off his pads, and the Soviets start back once more. Varianov ahead for Farutnov. One man at the side of the net, track along the save. And Skuradek was foiled that time. Good set up by Farutna for Skuradek. But Trakalo held his ground. Serge Roy got caught on the, the blue line of, of the Soviets, and Skurdak tries to jam it in there, but Trakalo makes a nice pad save and holds his ground sitting. Actually, Skurdak had a couple of opportunities there. Trakalo made the save sitting down. Balderas gets it quickly back to the point. This is Glushnikov. The shot well wide. Trakalo was out to set it up behind the net. Golikov for the Soviets now. Golikov working it back to the point. There's the shot. Trakalo made the save. And the puck came out of his glove and over to the corner. Now, here's Team Canada on the move. Led this time by Doucette. Doucette over for Francois Sills. Sills couldn't control it along the right side boards. Soviets content to play it back. Lushenkov. Ahead for Balderas. Off his skate. And Balderas races for it. Comes up with a puck. Gets the icing call waved off. Trakalo held on. Balderas simply outskated Doug Clark. It's 3-0. The Dynamo leading Team Canada. Time runs out in period one. 59 seconds left in period one. The Moscow Dynamo have outshot Team Canada 19-7 to this stage of period one. So Trakalo has made some big saves, but three have gotten by. From the faceoff, loose out in front of the Canadian goal. Soviets quickly to, there to claim it along the boards and over to the far side. And Ferrov. And Ferrov lost it. Anderson led the way with a pass ahead for Ian Ramsey. Ramsey tried to get it in through a Soviet maze for Simpson, and quickly, the Dynamo to the attack once more. This is Enfera, that one. Off Perry Proft, and into the corner, here's Simpson, banking it off the boards. Not quite, kept in by the Soviets, as Peyusov couldn't control it there. Akulinen has problems for the Soviets as well, and Team Canada, led now by Perry Proft, with a pass ahead to Simpson across two lines, down the right side. Just 18 seconds left in the first period, some worries for Dave King in the opening. It, has, it hasn't been a very good period at all for Dave King and Team Canada. And they're, they're having trouble on their own end, and they're having trouble getting any attack going. And there's Dave Simpson, the team captain, and he's looking for his first goal. He's a, a fine playmaker, and Dave King told me today they want to get him to shoot the puck more. 16 seconds left as the faceoff comes into the center ice area. Durden for the Soviets. Dumps it back into the Canadian zone with nine seconds on the clock. Out across the blue line, and that'll be just about it for period one. Oh, yes, they do. Whistle sounded just as the, or the siren sounded, just uh, as they held it along the boards in front of the Team Canada bench. So a little bit of regrouping to do for Team Canada after a rather lackluster first period. Well, the Soviets lost the last two games, and they've come out for this period to have dominated the period throughout. The, they had some great chance to score. They scored three goals, and Trackle made some outstanding saves or the score could have been a lot worse than it is. Trakalo faced 19 shots. The Soviet netminder, Vasilnuk, just seven. And the Soviets are 3-0 leaders after 20 minutes of play at the Olympic Saddle Dome in Calgary. This is game eight in the series. Moscow Dynamo have won the opening five. Canada has won the last two. So after one period of play, Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada 3-0. 
After one period of play at the Saddle Dome in Calgary, the Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada 3 to nothing. The Soviets quickly to the attack after losing the previous two games in the series. Darren Lowe joins us down at the Canadian team bench. And, and Darren, can you... Uh Zabrelchev scoring at 10-18, and then Antipov from Zabrelchev at 16-48. The Soviets out shooting Canada 19-7, so Trakalo had a very busy first period of play. Made some big saves too, Darcy, but uh, really Team Canada seemed to be a little lethargic, a little sleepy, or, uh, or perhaps a little confused. They seem to be disorganized that period, and I guess it's understandable when you have eight new players in the lineup, and most of them meeting each other for the first time today. And I'm sure Dave King will have them uh, talking about the system he wants them to use and keep reminding them. And I'm, I would expect them to have a better period this in the second. There was a stage in that first period when the score was two to nothing for the Soviets. Canada had a two-man advantage and uh, really didn't come up with any uh, great scoring opportunities. That, uh, as we look back, might uh, might come back to haunt the Canadian team. Good look at Helmut Balderas, and he's leading this tournament with 12, actually 13 points. Now he's picked up another assist. And he's a magician when he gets that puck. He's a very talented player. Doesn't like the rough going, but when he gets the puck, he does many great things with it. Got some more lettering on his helmet there. Yes, I he found out what... the jazz the other night. I now. found out what the, those other letters meant uh, today. I, I guess it's the team that he plays for, uh, the Riga Dynamo, play Finland a lot, and he has a habit of changing uh, souvenirs with the, the Finnish players also. So we don't know what those letters really stand for in uh, in Russian, but... Uh, we just know he likes jazz music. <laughs> <laughs> he is uh, the free spirit of this Moscow Dynamo team, if, uh, and there really aren't uh, very many personalities that come come out of a Soviet hockey team, or at least it takes them a little while in international competition. But Helmut Balderas does have a little bit of a personality, and he is a little bit different than uh, other members of the Soviet team. Quite regimented on and off the ice much of the time. Ready to begin the second period underway. Face off down into the Soviet zone. As the Dynamo lead Team Canada 3-0. After one period, it's cleared all the way back down the ice. And Newell Brown touches it. It'll be a face off back in Soviet territory. The Soviet players are all great skaters. I guess it's because the bigger ice surface in the, in so, in the Soviet Union, they, get, they look at Varyanov, the leading point getter for this team last year. And he's been effective throughout this series with two goals and three assists. So Newell Brown will be at center ice for Canada. He's flanked by Ridley and Lowe. Face off, right back to the point. Fired shot right on Rob Whistle. And Besselnook made that save and another one. It's gloved ahead at the line. The Soviets touch it, so it's not whistled down. Mariana for the Soviets. Now Team Canada in control behind the Soviet net as Ridley tries to work himself free. Out in front for Darren Lowe, and Lowe didn't have a, a great opportunity to get a shot away. Canadians with some pressure right now. They trail it three to nothing. Really haven't had any good scoring opportunities, but one now right out in front. Here's Newell Brown, and Ridley was right there, but Basselnook held the fort. Good chance there. Good shift by Team Canada to start the second period. They put some pressure on the Soviet defense. Get a look here at the save. Newell Brown tries to go up, and Vasilnuk makes a nice pad save. Good action for Team Canada, and the other thing, just carry on with another good shift and get something going. Mikhail Vasilnuk, Soviet netbinder, is 36 years old. And the faceoff to the left of Vasilnuk. Team Canada keeping it in, shot from Sills that time. And it was blocked by Golikov, who got it ahead for Balderas. Balderas in along the right side, shot right on. Trakalo. He caught that one between the pads and held on. Good save by Trakalo. Balderas breaks in on the right wing and makes a nice little move to the inside. And a good, good shot and good save. Benoit Doucette, the leading point getter for this Canadian hockey team and has played very effectively throughout this tournament. From the face off back to the point, and Glushenkov fired it, it's off a stick and high over the glass. So they'll do it in the same circle once more. 
Next game for Team Canada in this series on January 7th in Thunder Bay. Our final telecast on TSN will be January 9th from the Forum in Montreal. And around behind his own goal, it's Victor Passa. Number eight, Passa. Toronto product, currently at the University of Wisconsin. Center ice area. Canada fails to get it across the Soviet line. Now trailing on the play. Croft gets it across, but the Soviets flip it right down. Balderas once more. Balderas going in, just fired it wide. Balderas very quick on his skates. Right out in front, Golikov. Played it over on the far side. They score on the backhand as Golikov set it up. And the Soviets move into a 4 to nothing lead on Team Canada. Golikov made the play. Number 10. Doesn't Balderas make it look, look easy here? Golikov makes a nice little pass. Balderas goes to his backhand, throws it high. Gets the defense and commit himself. Golikov does. He throws it to Balderas, and he just throws it high in the top corner. The Soviets are very unselfish. They love to move the puck and get those pretty goals. And they feel they'd rather make the nice, pretty play and get two guys to get confidence than rather one who takes a shot and scores a goal. 135 of the second period. Balderas gives the Soviets a 4 to nothing lead. And after losses in... Ottawa and again in Toronto one evening later in game six and seven the Soviets are very definitely back on top of their game in this game at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. Free Roden in the center ice area dumping it into the Canadian zone. Trackalolo to set it up behind his net. Over for Doug Clark. And Clark for Brent Meckling. Soviets in across the Canadian line. Kulina, number eight, and he's written out of the play by Clark. Meckling. Losing it there. Shot on Trakalo once more. That time, Bree Roden. And Trakalo keeps it out, but the Soviets in control, leading by four. Face off in the Team Canada zone. And the Bosco Dynamo in control of a 4 to nothing lead. They have scored early in the second period after leading 3 nothing after the first 20 minutes. Canadians to the attack, breaking out of their own zone. Von Karpin, number 15 for Canada. Cooks control it. Soviets with Antipov in across the line, over on the left side. And it's loose in front of the circle, right out in front now. The net. Back to the point, shot right on from Peyuzov. Fired just wide, into the corner now. Zabrilchev in behind the Canadian net. And Farov, number 21, working there. Carpen just got it out across the line for the Canadian team. Collision of two Canadian players in the center ice area. Play continues on as Whistle carried it across for Team Canada. Fired it out in front for Mellonby. And he couldn't get a shot away. In the center ice zone. Slipchenko for the Soviets. Ahead on the left side for Antipov. Out in front of the Canadian goal, and Whistle cleared it to the line and across. Soviets quickly regain control as Payusa plays it over on the far side. Into the center ice area. The root mouth. Here's a chance for Canada. Ridley going in. Score! Mike Ridley! Fine individual effort by Mike Ridley. He's a tremendous four checker. He takes the puck off the Soviet defender here. Baradinov there checks him, walks in all alone. Makes a nice little move to his forehand, tucks it in the corner. Good poke check here by Mike Ridley. He skates in, gets good control of the puck. Makes a good little move for his second goal of this tournament. And they mark that one down at 3.34. Soviets quickly back. And a good save by Trakalo at the other end. You just missed that, but Trakalo had to hold the fort the other end of the ice. Now, here comes Team Canada. Ahead on the left side. That's Newell Brown, 17, couldn't make the play. Now, Darren Lowe comes up with it for Canada into the Soviet zone. And back there for it. Bozikov, 4 to 1, Dynamo leading Team Canada. Early in the second period at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. Croft for Canada. Head on the left side. That play failed to materialize. Ridley was there waiting for it. Skordak for the Soviets. And around behind and back to the line. Bozikov winds up with a shot. Trakalo the save. Skordak claims the loose puck and back to the point on the other side. Trakalo once more. 
Loose in front, finally dumped down the ice by Canada. And just in the nick of time as Ridley dumped it down. Icing will be called against Team Canada. Mozakov, a couple of big saves, and the score might have changed. It's 4-1, Bosco leading Team Canada. John Wells along with Darcy Rhoda, the Saddle Dome in Calgary. This is game eight in the Canadian Moscow Dynamo 85 series. Face off quickly ahead for Geddes for Canada and across the line. He's taken out of the play by Glushenkov. Soviets move to the attack once more. This is Mikulchek. Ahead for Balderas. Balderas in across the line. Taken away from him. And back into the neutral zone. Soviets. Glushenkov, 28. Kept in by Canada. Glushenkov's pass intercepted. It was Francois Sills getting a stick on it. Team Canada. Trying to control in the Soviet zone. Back in the neutral area, Brent Meckling. He lost it. This is Geddes. In around behind the Moscow Dynamo goal. And the Soviets. In across the Canadian line, that shot. From Semenov was blocked. Here's a chance for Canada. Two on one over on the left side. Going in the shot. And the save, Baselnuk. Ian Ramsey. Good opportunity for Canada. Soviets right back. This is Golikov on the left side. He's written out by Ramsey. Held along the boards and we'll have a face off in the Canadian zone, but Ramsey almost got Canada within two. Ian Ramsey had a great opportunity and a goaltender made a great save on him. But that goal by Ridley seems to spark. Here's a chance by Ramsey. Goes in. Bezelek comes out. Makes a good save on Ian Ramsey. But that goal by Mike Ridley seems to spark Team Canada. And that happens so often in a hockey game. When the team is struggling and frustrated, a goal will come and just seems to spark the whole team. And that's what's happened to Team Canada right now. Canada on the attack, led by Ramsey once more in across the Soviet line. And Simpson after it, number 16 for the Canadians. Pressing in along the boards is Serge Roy, number three, Soviets. Quickly the attack once more, Varianov leading the way. That play broken up. This is Sashov trying. Akulina. And across the Canadian line. Back forward is Serge Roy. Akulina out in front for the Soviets. Cleared back to the points. And it was offside. Durden couldn't keep it in for the Dynamo that time. 4 to 1. Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada. All right, a young hockey fan enjoying the international competition at the Saddle Dome in Calgary. I'm John Wells along with Darcy Rhoda. 13.32 to play in the second period. Soviets, the Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada 85, 4 to 1. And the faceoff just outside the Canadian blue line. Soviets a little slow getting into position. And perhaps a planned play as the Soviets take control, flipping it in. And that time, Trocalo held on. A flip shot, but when he turned to release the puck, there were Soviets all around. Smart play, play by Trocalo there. He had no place to go with the puck, so just cover up and get a face off. And they've got their best man out there in Simpson. Trocalo was brilliant in Team Canada's first victory of this series, 8-3 to three over the Moscow Dynamo, that in Ottawa. Bruce Dowie played the next game. That was in Toronto. And he was quite good. Named the number one uh, star of the game. Canada right out in front of the Soviet goal. And no chance that time for Simpson to convert. Soviets back to the attack and loose in the center ice area again. Picked up by Ian Ramsey. Ramsey back for Passa. And Passa to the Soviet line. Got it across. Basil Nook out to set it up. Team Canada changing now. As the Soviets push the attack once more and across the line and quickly flipped out once more. Into Soviet ter territory, Antipov over for Bozikov. This is Zubrelchev. The Canadian line and across tried to feed it out front. And Ferov was waiting for it there. All the way down to the Soviet zone. Carpet got there first. There will be no call on the icing. Oh, Number 19 holding it along the board for Canada and a face off in the Soviet zone. Scott Mellonby. 
Well, the series continues in Thunder Bay on Monday, January 7th. Our final game on TSN, the Moscow Dynamo Team Canada 85 series, Wednesday, January the 9th from the Forum in Montreal. It stands five wins to two for the Dynamo at this stage. Good hustle there by Vaughn Carpenter to get to the puck first and get the icing waved off. To no avail, however, as the Soviets dump it all the way down to the Canadian zone. Doug Clark, number four, around for Mellonby on the right side. He couldn't clear it out. Now Mellonby starts in behind his own goal, plays it back, and ahead for Carpet. Carpet neatly off the boards, but Varianov claimed it for the Soviets. Center ice area, picked up by Darren Lowe. Lowe got it ahead for Cranston. Cranston to the line and across, but Lowe couldn't control it after that. Soviets in behind the net, right out in front, Ridley, they score! Ridley set it up perfectly, and Team Canada back in the hockey game. There's that four checking by, by Ridley again, does a great job, gets the puck turned over behind the Soviet net, throws it out to Darren Lowe, and he just flips a little backhander into the far side. But a good job for checking by Mike Ridley from Winnipeg. Throws it out, and Darren Lowe scores his first goal right there. So that makes it a four to two hockey game. Canada right back into the thick of things with more than half the game still ahead. 11 minutes, 26 seconds to play in the second period. Ridley to the line, got it across. Soviets cleared to the center ice area once more. And it's flipped in by Canada's Serge Roy, but that was offside. A big goal for Team Canada. Ridley setting up Darren Lowe, and it's 4-2 midway through the second. The Saddle Dome in Calgary, Moscow Dynamo, Team Canada. This is game eight of the series. The Soviets lead this game 4-2. Canada with two goals in the second period. Right back into the thick of things. It's 4-2 right now. Into the Soviet zone. And after it is Darren Lowe, number 21 for Canada. This is Lowe coming up with it again. His shot off a Soviet pad. And quickly, the Dynamo to the Canadian line. Led by Akulinen. Shot right on. Trakalo made the save on a backhand. Good defensive zone coverage by Team Canada. They took their man and, and stayed with him all the way. Serge Roy, you see there, wearing the facial shield to protect the sore nose. Get a look at the action here. Canada's a great job right in front of the net there, taking their man. Perry Proft, a Vancouver Canuck draft choice. Great job in front of the net there. Face off to the left of Trackalo, claimed by Canada. Rob Whistle in around behind his net. Got it ahead for Paul Geddes. Geddes can't get to the line and out. Soviets take over. Free rope, number 27, tried to feed it in front for Sashov. Sashov didn't have a play. Sashov in along the boards against Whistle, number five. They hold it and get a whistle. That's Rob Whistle. He's from Thunder Bay, Ontario, so he'll get to play before the home crowd in game nine of the series. He's been playing very effectively, a defensive type of defense to them, but he's got three assists so far in this tournament. There you go. Whistle waiting patiently behind his own goal. Now ahead of the right side for Benoit Doucette. Doucette to the Soviet line, fired it in after it. Francois Sills, number 11, and it's kept in for Team Canada by Geddes, number 20. However, the Soviets right back out. Sashov led the way. His pass over for Free Road. Free Road had to stop. In behind the Canadian goal, Akulin is back there. He couldn't come up with it, but the Soviets have possession right out in front. And Trakalo, another miracle save as the Soviets cleared it out front. Now, Paul Geddes for Canada. And he was slowed down, starting back for the Soviets. Sashov, number 15 to the Canadian line and across in the neutral ice area. Now across the line for Canada, Doucette in for Sills on the left side. Into the corner, they'll hold it for a face-off. Much more aggressive, Team Canada 85 in the second period. It's 4-2, to 9.37 to play in the second. Second period at the sports show. John Wells along with Darcy Rota, the Saddle Dome in Calgary, game eight in the Team Canada 85, Moscow Dynamo 85 series. Face off in the Soviet zone. at Simpson 16 after it for Canada. But the Soviets quickly to the attack. 
Led this time by Eddie Pop going right in. And Takalo once more on number 25, Anatoly Eddie Pop. Good individual effort by Eddie Pavi. Breaks around Clark here, holds him off. The one arm cuts in front of the net. Trackla makes a good save. And covered up nicely as well. Good look at it here. He makes a nice cut in off his off wing and tries to throw it between Trackalo's legs. Canada claiming it from the face off. Clark around behind his own net over there for Dave Anderson. Anderson along the boards with help now from Meckling. Meckling number six, losing it for Enferov. Clark for Canada, ahead into the point, not quite out. As Slipchenko kept it there for the Soviets, shot right on that time from Enferov. Trakalo, another good save into the slot right on, and Trakalo once more, that time on Antipov. Trakalo, two saves on Antipov, a penalty coming up to Team Canada. And that was about all they could do on that particular play. Meckling had to haul down the Soviet going to the net. He'll go off two minutes for holding. But John, we've been talking about this. the Canadians have been very good about taking bad penalties, but he had to take this penalty. Here. It's a big grab around the shoulder and uh, maybe a bit of a dive, but I'm sure they had to call that. Meckling from University of Calgary and a native of Calgary, a first year of economics. Dave King looks on. He's seen a lot of hockey players go through this program in the past 10 days or so. 47 have been in a Team Canada uniform since this series began. Soviets on the power play. Bazikov into the corner and behind the net. Soviets out in front. That was Varianov just firing it across. Barodinov, number 20, into the corner. Barodinov once more. Still has it. Being watched closely, really doesn't have much of a play. Now to the point, Popakin, Popakin, over for Bazikov, in for Faradunov, and the save by Trakalo once more. A good save. Back to the point, Popakin. And the return pass out in front, that one stopped. Barudinov. And to Popakin. Bazikov fired at Skuridak, tried to get a stick on it, and he got it just wide. Marianov, number 12 for the Soviets, for Skuridak. Skuridak turning. Soviets have controlled the play. They haven't had many good scoring chances, but they are very patient. Marianov behind the net. Skuridak back for Kopakin. Into the corner once more, out in front. Skuridak was set up and couldn't get any, couldn't get a stick on that one. Bazikov. In for Varianov. Varianov to Skuridak. Skuridak out in front. And Varudnov couldn't control it to the line and kept in by Popakin. Good play there. Varianov to Skuridak. Skuridak back to Varianov. Soviets in complete control, waiting for the opportunity right out in front, and they do get it. As the Soviets out in front, 5-2 to two now. Well, and there wasn't much that Trakalo could do on that one. Well, I guess you can see that coming. They had control for the whole power play, and they had some great chances. But they finished it off here with a nice play. Skurduck throws it right here. You see Varianov go around. Give it back to Skurduck. He throws it back to Varianov, and he throws in the open net. Those pretty little plays they love to do. Goal scored by number 12, Nikolai Varianov. Assisted by number seven, Victor Shurdu, and at number six, Evgeny Papikin. The time at 12.51. A power play goal. 12.51, the time of the clock as the Soviets move into a three-goal lead once more at five to two. Quickly to the attack once more. The Soviets in the Canadian zone. Held at bay by Tim Krug. Now back to the Soviet line. Playing back there by Glushenkov. Over for Balderas. And Balderas for Golikov. Soviets still behind the line now at center ice. This is Balderas. Somehow slipped through, lost the puck, however, as Ridley was there. Krug for Canada. Ahead for Ridley. Ridley scored earlier. Turned the wrong way on that one, or he might have got in by himself. Nikolchik. Golikov trailing on the play. Soviets skate right past it. 
and Geddes is over on the left side for Canada. Had to wait for it. On a pass from Whistle, Geddes got it out front, right to the crease. And Vasselnook, the save. He went down to cover up. There's Vasselnook there. His cage there below, he looked like he's got a Mercedes-Benz advertisement. <laughs> what a chance for Canada. They direct the puck towards the net. And looking for any type of rebound or deflection. A, sc a scramble goal just to get, get them back in this game because they need a goal very much now. That's Perry Proft being attended to by the trainers at the Canadian team bench. From the face off, out dangerously in front of the Soviet goal, but it's cleared neatly. Not out of the Soviet zone. Canada in control around behind the net. This is Doucette. Now Durden for the Soviets to the line and across as Brent Meckling couldn't keep it in for Canada. Doug Clark back to touch it. And there was no, uh, no icing call there as it was not across the necessary lines. Akulanen fighting for it. Now Doucette for Canada. Over on the left side. Geddes chopped it down the ice. Mazikov back forth for the Soviets. Still loose in the Soviet zone. And backhanded down the ice by the Moscow Dynamo. They lead it 5-2. to two. And icing called against the Soviet Union. So Team Canada got back and close for a moment. They still trail by three right now. Back for a face-off in the Soviet zone to the right of Mikhail Vasilnuk. He has stopped 15. At the other end of the ice, 32 shots. For Canadian netminder, Daryl Trakalo. Canada out in front of the Soviet goal, and that time Simpson couldn't quite get to it. Quickly the attack once more, the Soviets. And that play broken up at the Canadian line. Moscow Dynamo back to regroup. This is Peusa for Antipov, number 25. Now, Zabrilchev. Zabrilchev having trouble against the Canadian forechecking as Canada keeps it in over here for Simpson on the left side. And Simpson couldn't control against Peusa. Soviets back on the attack ahead of the left side. And the open man, Zabrilchev. Couldn't get a shot away. He was in too deep. Tried the left side on track of Loza. Brilchev came up with it again. He's being watched by Passa for Team Canada. To the line, not quite out. Now, Serge Roy takes over for the Canadians. To the Soviet line and across, Serge Roy. And Roy had to turn back. Fired it back to the line to Passa. Passa kept it in for Canada. Canadians in control in the Soviet zone. In around behind the Moscow Dynamo goal. Put there by Slavchenko now. As he moved in. Now Melody moved in for Canada. And couldn't keep it in. Soviets clear it down the ice. And that'll be an icing call against the Moscow Dynamo. Face off will be right back in the Soviet zone with 346 left in period two. Good look at Dennis Cranston from the University of Alberta. He's in a Fort Saskatchewan native from Alberta in his second year at Arts. He's kind of a quick skater and got a pretty good shot. A couple of other players from the University of Alberta in the lineup. Tim Krug and Perry Proft. Coming up on TSN, another international hockey match. You'll likely enjoy Soviet Spartak against Bowling Green University. For Canada, Von Karpin kept it in. Only momentarily, the Soviets out once more. Lead pass. Skurdak takes the shot and scores. Skurdak for the Soviets, and that makes it 6-2. to two. Skur Skurdak gets a nice lead pass here, and let's go a shot that I'm sure Trackle could have over again. He'd love to have it. Slipped between his legs. He Good. actually made the initial save, didn't yes, he? Yes, it just trickled between his legs. As you see here, it goes in the old five hole. Well, he stopped it partially. Loneliest guy in the building right now. After some big saves, that one uh, is the one, as you say, Darcy, that he'd like to, that shot, the one he'd like to have back. That was all a result of the quick Soviet break, which they're known to be so effective at. Skurdak once more right out in front and fired it wide that time. Skurdak set it up. 
And Varianov just fired it wide on the backhand. Varianov once more. That shot blocked by Tim Krug. Krug comes up with it. And ahead for Dennis Cranston. Play whistle down. A Soviet player hit the ice for Rutnov just inside the line. And now Von Karpin is upset about something. Von Karpin and Vozikov got their stick up. But here we see the penalty on Varianov. He gets his elbows up and will go off two minutes. But the play with Von Karpin and Vozikov, Vozikov's probably the, the most hated player by the Canadians. He's a, a feisty guy that sticks his nose in there. And not very popular among the Canadians at all. Varianov is off at 16.55. So Canadian power play with three minutes, five seconds to play in the second period. This Glushenkov cleared it to center ice. Doug Clark for Canada. Clark over for Proft. And the Canadians in the power play. Really not making much use of their manpower advantage, at least in the early moments of the power play. Back to the Canadian line once more. This is Clark. To the Soviet line, fed it into the middle. Now it's back to Clark. He's in the corners. Canada sets up the power play. Shot right on that time by Prop. Vasilnuk, little problem with it. Back to the point once more. This is Clark. In for low, and Vasilnuk, a big save there as the Soviets clear it out once more. 107 left in the Canadian power play. Well, Timbers are getting a little shorter out there. Balderas and Lowe get their sticks up. And I guess they'll both go off two minutes. You see here, Darren and Lowe, Balderas get their sticks and each other a little slash. And that's the most action I've seen Balderas uh, do in this series. He's, he does not like the rough going one bit at all. But way, the way he plays, I guess he doesn't have to. So Canada will have. The power play with four skaters to three for a minute four. And to Team Canada, number 21, Darren Lowe, two minutes each for roughing at 17.51. Valderas and Lowe, two each for roughing at 17.51. In the neutral zone, the faceoff, Mellonby. And ahead now for Prop. Prop regroups, heads back to his own line. Over on the far side for Serge Roy. And it's over the glass. So 52 seconds left in the Team Canada power play. Scott Mellonby, University of Wisconsin. He's a Philadelphia draft choice this past June and pretty good hockey player. He and Victor Pose are both members of the University of Wisconsin. Badgers arrived just Around 2 o'clock this afternoon in time to play in this game. They'll also play in the game in Thunder Bay and then head back to school. They've been a busy couple. They played a game just the other night for the University of Wisconsin. Basil Nook falls on a loose puck to the side of his goal. Well, Team Canada have got what they want. They've got a face off in the Soviet zone. Now they just get control of it, work it around, and hopefully get a good shot on net. Still have 40 seconds on the 4 and 3 advantage. 1.45 left in the period. And a smile there. You don't see that very often, Dars. Uh, not really that much, no. Didn't last long. Wasn't very happy after the last game, game seven in Toronto. Canadians on the power play. 34 seconds left, back to the point. This is Proud getting set, fired it. Right back to him, over to the far side for Serge Roy. And this is Mellonby in behind the net, number 19, lost it there. 22 seconds left in the penalty. Soviets dump it down the ice. And Canada regrouping quickly, Proud. Starts up the right side. Gets it across the Soviet line. Can't control it there. To the line and out as Doug Clark could keep it in for Canada. So just two seconds remain of the Canadian power play. Soviets now back at full strength. I shouldn't say back at full strength, back at even strength. Here's Mellonby going in. Mellonby working to the back end as Basildook stood his ground. Mariana for the Soviets, number 12. The Canadian line and across around in behind the goal. Barutnov got it out front and 
Marianoff couldn't get to it. This is Simpson for Canada, back behind his own goal. 25 seconds left of the roughing penalties to the Canadian and Soviet players. Low and Balderas. Simpson across the line, working against the Soviets. Basakov in the corner. Now Anderson tries to get free as Simpson continues to hold on to it. Shot right on, fired that time by Clark. Into the corner for the Soviets. Kolb again, number six. Center ice area, both teams back at full strength now. Darren Lowe banked it off the boards. No one could claim it for Canada. And that ends period two. The Soviet Union scoring a couple of quick goals. And into the lead at 6-2. to two. Team Canada got close at 4-2 to two and a goal by Lowe. But Varyana from Skirdak and Popakin made it 5-2. to two And quickly, the uh, Soviets out in front on Skirdak's goal at 6-2. to two. Well, it's a better period by Team Canada, and hopefully they can regroup, come out and have a better third. Well, they've got to pick up four goals. We'll continue in a moment. After two periods, the Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada 6-2. to two. This is game eight of the 85 series. The Soviets winning the opening five games. Team Canada winning two in a row, but the Canadians are struggling in game eight. A couple of goals for Canada in the second period. Balderas scoring for Moscow to make it four to nothing, but Canada back on goals by Ridley and Lowe. It was four to two at that stage. Then Varianov and Skirdak. It is six to two. Soviets out shooting Canada 14 to 12 in the second period for a two period total of 33 to 19. Well, Darcy, a couple of quick ones, and you can get back into this one if you're coach Dave King, but they'll have to score quickly. Well, Canada has played their best hockey in the tournament in the third period. They've got to get the puck in, do some forechecking, cause some turnovers, and hopefully get an early goal, goal as you say. Neil Brown from Cornwall, currently a member of the Fredericton Express. He's been with this Team Canada group for most of the series. And the third period now underway. Mariana for the Soviets. Ahead for Perutinov, and he fired it just wide. Scrambling back to his feet now for Canada. Trackalo got a glove on that one. Sloppy start for Team Canada in the third period. They're having problems in their own zone. Soviets marching very quickly to the attack now for Canada. Ahead for Newell Brown. Right to the Soviet goaltender. Vasilnuk, he didn't have to make a play. It was cleared by the defense. Here comes Skordak for the Soviets across the line. And the play broken up in the center ice area. This is Ridley for Canada. And Newell Brown to the blue line, over for Ridley, getting set, can't get a shot away. Now it comes back, and Posa for the Canadians, could not get his shot away. Soviets led now by Mikulchik, back to regroup. This is Semenov, number 26. In for Mikulchik, behind the goal, clear to the head. Canadians keep it in, this is Geddes, number 20. In behind the Soviet goal, out in front. And an opportunity there for Doucette. Kept in at the point by Pop. Geddes around behind the goal. Out in front for Doucette. He can't control it now. Got a shot, but fired it well wide. Pop in to keep it up. Keep it in for Canada. Doucette comes up with it. Doucette left it for Sills. Vassal Nook out of his net to set it up. Baldera is cruising down the left wing for the Soviets. And Baldera is well out of the play, just cruising out there. As Sills tried to get it back to the point, it goes all the way down. Passa back for Canada. This is Passa. Now seven off for the Soviets right out in front. Tokello made the save. Pop and across the Soviet line for Canada. He sprawls. At the point, it's kept in by the Canadians. Soviets for Paul Darris. Going in the shot, and that one hit Trackalo. He's down. Trackalo takes it high on the shoulder from Paul Darris. Let's, let's the slap shot go from the top of the circle, and that really stunk. The big hook right there lets it fly, gets him high on the shoulder. So Trackalo is shaking it off in the Canadian goal. It's six to two, the Dynamo leading Team Canada.
Saddled home in Calgary, back for a faceoff in the Canadian zone. Trackalo is back in the Canadian goal and went down to scoop that one up right off the faceoff. Took a hard shot from Helmut Balderas in the left shoulder, but apparently he's all right. Daryl Trackalo, and he slides out once more, taking no chances. Maybe he's looking for a little extra time to get ready. Get another look at this shot by Balderas. Let's go a high shot with that big curve they got in their stick and tendencies are always to go high with the puck. Back to the live action. Canada trying to break out of its own zone. This is Meckling, number six, got it across the line into the neutral area. Over on the left side now for Simpson. Simpson can't get it across the Soviet line and keep it there. Soviets start back. Sashov, number 15, and across the Canadian line. Now it's out again for Simpson. Simpson down the left side. Tries to get around two Soviets. Sasha was trailing on the play. And checking Simpson. Neutral territory once more. Doug Clark over on the right side for Brent Meckling. Meckling back to Clark. Canada, long pass on the right side. This is Anderson. He couldn't control it. Bozikov for the Soviets. Into the center ice area for Antipov. He's back in across his own line. Von Carpet. Four checking for Canada. Bozikov for the Soviets. Backhand pass. Clear to the center ice area. This is Krug for Canada. Soviet line and across. Razzleduck back to set it up. Carpet in the corner. 15. Mellonby sprawling in the corner, trying to get it into the, in behind the Soviet goal for Cranston. Does right out in front. And Carpen just wide on that opportunity. Mellonby. Back for Cranston. Now loose out in front for Carpen. He couldn't get a shot away. Soviets quickly to the attack. Led once more by Zabrelchev. Zabrelchev around the Canadian defense. Goes to the backhand. And Trocalo made the save. It's 6-2 to the Dynamo. Leading Team Canada early in the third period. John Wells along with Darcy Rowe to the Saddle Dome in Calgary. And Team Canada behind four goals to the Moscow Dynamo. Face off in the Canadian zone, claimed by Team Canada. Pass ahead on the right side for Newell Brown. He couldn't control it. It's down the ice, Semenov. Back forth for the Soviets. Now in the neutral area, Pasa claiming it for Canada. Over on the right side for Perry Prop. Prop tried to feed it ahead for Darren Lowe. And Lowe lost control for the Soviets now. Zabrelchev in across the line on the right side. Zabrelchev working right out in front. And no opportunity to get the shot away for the Soviets, number 21. And Farov that time still in the Canadian zone. Now Prop for Canada. Ahead of the left side for Newell Brown. Brown shot it, but it was a weak shot, handled easily by Vasilnuk. And we'll have a face-off in the Soviet zone. NBA basketball action continues on TSN. The Bullets and the Bucks, Tuesday, January the 8th, live on TSN, 8.30 Eastern time. Face-off will be to the right of Vasilnuk in the Soviet zone, 6-2, Dynamo leading Team Canada. Center ice Doucette for Canada. Into the corner, Doucette claims it after the faceoff. The Soviets right back. Geddes working in behind the Soviet goal. It came loose up the left side and kept in by Canada. Now Meckling can't control it. The Soviets have done a great job of shutting down Doucette. Sales have been the most productive for Canada throughout this tournament. This is Doucette now. On the left side, with Sills in front, Doucette. Sills gets in too deep, Doucette plays it back to the backhand. And that shot fired wide by Meckling, the defenseman. Now, Sills coming up with it. Sills, right out in front for Doucette, or rather for uh, Geddes. And Geddes couldn't get a shot away. We've got a penalty coming up as Geddes goes down, and it'll be against the Soviets. Marianoff will go off for two minutes for tripping in front of the net here. You see him up, the puck comes in front here. And Geddes is upset by Variana. Canada with 14 minutes and 30 seconds will go on the power play and a great chance to get back in this hockey game. Well, they have to pick up a few goals, like four.
Face off will be to Vassal Nooks left this time. Dave Simpson, the center for Canada. He got the drop. And they score. Doug Clark right off the face off. A perfect drop from Dave Simpson. Great shot by Doug Clark and that face off so important. Simpson, I don't think he's lost a face off all night. Gets it back and let's go with a high shot that beats Vasiluk high in the glove side. But the key on that was the face off. For Doug Clark. Doug Clark is a banker at Canuck Draft Choice and goes to Colorado College. Playing his first game tonight. So Canada trailing six to three at this stage of things. Maybe that'll spark the Canadian team just a little bit more. Krug in across the line. Soviets back to claim it in there. This is Simpson going after it for Canada. Simpson around behind the net. Left it there for Anderson. 27 Anderson working against Mikulchik. Now Simpson right out in front to the side of the net. And that was fired into the mesh by Ian Ramsey. Balderas for the Soviets. And across the line, in complete control. Now walking in, Mikulchik. His shot deflected high. Boog is all on his own as Canada changes on the go. Lazica for the Soviets. Balderas left it. Soviets in. Akulinen took the shot. That one blocked by Proft. And Team Canada starts back, led by Proft. Ahead for Von Carpen. Carpet can't catch up with it. Baselnook comes sprawling out to make the not exactly a save, but to at least get control of the puck for the Moscow Dynamo. This telecast is protected by copyright and is intended solely for the non-commercial entertainment of our viewing audience. Any use, reproduction, or distribution in whole or in part of the pictures or descriptions herein contained without the express written consent of the sports network is strictly prohibited. Dennis Cranston, number nine. Lost the draw for Canada that time. Soviets quickly to the attack. Long pass ahead for Prerode, and he couldn't control it just outside the Canadian line. This line of Prerode, Akulinen, and Shashov, along with Dirt, did not play in game seven. But they've been very effective tonight. Have not appeared in the statistics, but we'll be back in a moment. At the conclusion of the game, the Labatt Award of Panasonic Travel Vision to the top Canadian player, and the ESO Award and Icon FG Camera to the top Soviet, as well as the Continental Bank Award to the top defensive player of the game. So stay with us. At the conclusion of this Game 8 in the Team Canada Moscow Dynamo Series, things livening up just a little bit at the Saddle Dome. Canada trailing by three at 6-3, to 12.45 to play in period three. Soviets the attack, and Zubrelchev out in front. Takalo made the save that time. Zabrelchev claimed it once more. Into the corner, Zabrelchev after it. But it's picked up by Victor Passa for Canada. Canadians to the line and across. Soviets quick to claim it in the neutral territory once more. Antipov going in along with Zabrelchev and a brilliant save by Trakalo once more. As Trakalo comes out after the save to fall on a loose puck. Zabrelchev, a good opportunity. Z Zabrelchev has been effective all night, cutting it on his off wing. You notice here, cuts in around the defenseman, tries to go high. Trackle holds his ground. But he's done that about four times tonight and been stoned. Get another look at it right here. He's very, very strong, cutting off, off his wrong wing. And Trackle had to make another save on Antipop right after that one. Not quite as difficult as the first. Team Canada can't clear it out of the zone. Blistering shot fired that time by Variana. And it was over the net, but the rebound came out. Trakalo grabbed that. Very fortunate that that puck did not go in the net. It hit the glass and bounced back over the net. And as you see the shot here, goes over the glass, bounces back, and hits Trakalo on the back, and he covers up for the faceoff. Bill Brown at center for Canada. Got the draw back that time. Brown over on the left wing as Canada breaks out of its own zone. Pass ahead for Doug Clark. He couldn't control it. Soviets claim the loose puck. Marianne Back for Vazikov. Now 
for Canada. Ridley got it across the Soviet line. Bozikov back for it. Head on the left side for Kolpikin. He takes a return pass to the Canadian line. Kolpikin winds up with a shot. Fired wide. Ridley for Canada. Ahead for Newell Brown. And Brown has seen a lot of action in this the third period. Kolpikin for Bozikov. And ahead for Farutnov. Soviets in complete control at this stage of things. This is Skuradak over for Kolpikin. When the Soviets are circling so much in the neutral zone, their sticks are always on the ice or near it because they never know when they get to get the puck. Team Canada finally clearing it into the Soviet zone. And after it, Geddes number 20 for Canada. Into the corner, trying to get it out in front. Moving into the shot, Serge Roy. A blistering drive just wide. Balderas down the ice for the Soviets. Trakalo clear to the head. This is Rob Whistle. Whistle across the Soviet line, winds up with a shot. Vazelnik the save, and it's high over the glass. So a chance for Canada there, but still three goals to make up. It's 6-3 in the third. That's a good trick. 6-3, to three, the Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada. <laughs> And the Soviets have outshot the Canadians 38 to 24 at this stage of the period. Out in front, loose puck, but it's cleared away. And Team Canada has to go back to the center ice zone to regroup. A whistle played it back behind his line to the far side for Serge Roy. Head on the left wing, the Soviets go back for it. Mikulchik, 16. Head on the left side, couldn't click with Balderas that time, and across the Soviet line once more. Mikulchik is in control. Here come the Soviets, three on two. Over on the left side, Semenov. Into the middle for Golikov, and he couldn't get to it. Now a chance for Canada. Long pass ahead for Doucette. Doucette taken down. Oh, right on the line, they score! Doucette was hauled down, but trailing on the play was his partner, Francois Sills, and Canada back within two at six to four. Well, the big play, good effort. The big producers come through. They've been there producing all the way through here. But Doucette gets a nice pass here and stays onside, cuts in, gets hooked, keep, takes a shot anyway, and Sills follows up for the rebound. But Doucette made the great play there by staying onside and getting control of that high pass. See the net, net there, and Sills comes in and just throws her right in there. Half a period left for the Canadians to get close. It's six to four now. Two goals for Canada in the third. Doug Clark and Francois Sills. And with 9.41 to play, still lots of time. Lots of time left to win this hockey game. And Canada has been their custom to play their best hockey in the third period. And they're doing that tonight. Moscow Dynamo Team Canada Series continues Monday, January 7th in Thunder Bay. And the final game on the Sports Network TSN Wednesday, January 9th from the Montreal Forum. Soviets pressing now. Backhand shot weak. From the point that time, Peyuzov. And the Soviets led now by Slipchenko across the Canadian line. And Farah, 21. Winding up with a shot. That one whistled just wide. Peyuzov keeps it in for the Soviets. Winding up and Ferov. He has to go back and regroup. And Ferov still with the puck. Fired it wide. Slipchenko in behind the Canadian goal. Good play by Meckling for Canada. And here's another chance. Anderson couldn't control it. Number 27, Dave Anderson. And it's cleared across the line. Soviets quickly to the attack once more. Zabrelchev, number 18, going right in. Zabrelchev couldn't get a shot away. Trakalo played it extremely well for Canada in goal. Across the line now. This is Anderson, number 27. He lost it. Soviets going right in. The shot fired just wide. Loose puck claimed out in front by Carpen. Carpen ahead of the boards to the neutral area. And Varianov for the Soviets was there waiting. Zabrelchev, he's taken out of the play. And Canada had a problem as uh, Mellonby had a chance to break free. 
but could now he's back behind his own line. Scott Mellonby and on the left side, it's in across the Soviet line and quickly cleared out. The Soviets three on two now. Two Canadian defensemen back. Good play into the corner. And a little too far for Garudnov. Now he claims it back to the point. Kovikin, the shot right on. And Trakalo made the save. It's six to four, the Dynamo leading Team Canada. You're with the Sports Network, TSN. Seven minutes and 52 seconds to play in the third period. Canada trailing the Moscow Dynamo by two. Face off in the Canadian zone. Varianov gets the draw right back to the point. And Trakalo comes up with another save. Face off will be in the same area. Trakalo's been a very busy man tonight. He's faced 40. And Canada has to get great goaltending to win. Hope again. Fired that one into a Canadian team player. Now Mellonby starts out for Canada. Long pass goes too far for Dennis Cranston. And icing will be called against Team Canada. They'll take it all the way back. Now Dave King is looking upon this as an evaluation. And winning is not the most important thing, but you cannot tell the players playing these games that that's not uh, what they want to do. They want to go out and represent their country the best way they can, and that's by winning. Well, a lot of optimism on this Team Canada group after two straight victories. But in this game eight, King has made eight changes to evaluate more players. We mentioned earlier that there have been 47 players in Team Canada uniforms during this series. Golikov over for Balderas. Balderas taken off the puck. And Doug Clark claims it for Canada behind the Team Canada goal. Clark being checked from behind. Ahead on the right side for Carpen. Trailing, Cranston couldn't get it. This is Golikov for the Soviets. He's got Balderas with him. Golikov going in. Nicely taken out by Doug Clark. Number four, Balderas can't claim it. Soviets keep it in. Now back to the Soviet blue line and quickly. An open man down the right side. Dropped it back. Soviets working right in. A shot. Tackle over save. On seven off that time, number 26. The nice. Soviets love to go for the top corner at all times. Another good save here by Trakalo, drop pass. Soviet player cuts in. Seven off, let's, let's go a high shot. He can really whistle that biscuit. <laughs> all right, he has one goal and six assists, seven points coming into the game. <laughs> Canada in control after the faceoff. Center ice pass intended for Newell Brown. And the Dynamo quickly back. And Farah working against Tom Krug. Back across to the point, far side, shot. Tackle of the save once more. Right out in front, Soviets. Another chance that time, and Farah. Back to the line, Slipchenko. 24, can't control it. Two on two for Canada here. Pass ahead on the right side. Intended for Darren Lowe. Lowe got it right out in front. And the save was made. Vasselduck. Three on two Soviets. Andy Pond. In for Mikulczyk. Into the corner of Brelchev. Round on the right side boards. Down to the Soviet line. For Slipchenko over on the right side. And this is Varianov going in. Varianov can't get by three Canadian defenders. Team Canada on the attack. Pass on the right side for Francois Sills. He can't get to it. For Canada. Dropped to the line. Couldn't get it across. Here's a chance for the Soviets. Varianov going in all by himself. Varianov. And he scores. Varianov. Well, Canada did not get the puck in at the. Soviet blue line was turned over, and Varyanov breaks out in the breakaway. He's had about five, and I think that's his first goal in the breakaway. Makes a nice fake backhand shot, tucks her in on his forehand. Kent Nielsen, Nash Hockley, does that move a lot. Fakes his backhand, goes to the forehand, and just slides her in. So that makes it seven to four. For the Soviets, back 
behind their line. And quickly to the Canadian line. The route now. Shot. Vazikov to save Trakalo. Soviet still in control. Variana. Barutna. In behind the Canadian goal. Hassel falls right out in front. Trakalo stands his ground once more. He's down. Wide open net to shoot at. Popakin can't get to it. And here comes Team Canada. Doucette ridden off the puck. Stepping in Popakin now for the Soviets. Back behind the Canadian line. Rob Whistle. Winding up with a shot. Big drive by Victor Poza. Golikov for the Soviets. Into the corner. Loose puck picked up by Ian Ramsey. Head on the right side for Dave Anderson. This is Anderson. Canadian line. Tried to get it through for Ramsey. Couldn't. And the Soviets in on the right side once more. Golikov, Balderas, and Trakalo. Great save by Trakalo. Balderas, ever the opportunist, breaks in on the right wing. Gets a long lead pass from Glushnikov. Cuts in. Tries to tuck it in on his backhand, but a great pad save by Trakalo. Don't they love that quick break? Yeah, they sure do. 7-4, Dynamo leading Team Canada. And they play it so well, Darcy, no question about it. For Canada. A chance as Ramsey crossed the line. Now well, Vasilnuk is down, but he's back into the play of the Soviet goaltender. Soviets, this is Balderas. Balderas across the line. Still had control of it. Balderas comes up with it once more. They shoot and score as Balderas got it ahead to Golikov, and they can make it look so easy. Golikov, the Soviet captain. Well, Balderas, uh, the great stick handler he is, gets the puck to Golikov, and he just one times it. You'll see here, Balderas with Rob Whistle all over him. And just flicks the puck to Golikov, and he just comes in right here, as you see, and just lets her fly. Looks like Clark might have screened Trakalo. So it's now eight to four. Three minutes and 28 seconds to play. The Soviets very much in control of this hockey game. And Ferrov. And ahead to Zabrilchev. Zabrilchev into the corner. Picked up for Canada by Doug Clark. Clark around behind the goal. And on the right side, Melanby can't control it. Back for the Soviets, Payusa. And starting out, Slavchenko. Over on the left side for Andy Pop. Andy Pop going into the corner, around behind the Canadian goal. Still has it, worked himself right out in front, getting set for the shot. Trackalo the save and batted away with a stick. As Andy Pop was left completely untouched, right around behind the goal. And out in front to get a shot away. Now Zabrelchev into the backhand. Fired it wide. Two minutes, 38 seconds. Mellonby exchanging blows down there. Now the center ice area. Who's that, Semenov? Semenov against Cranston. I believe that's Zubachev. I'm sorry. And Cranston. Well, Mellonby was mixing it up along the boards on the other side. And he was going up against Enfera. There you see them. To the action right here. Melanie comes in. Good hard hit. They get their sticks and gloves out of each other and a couple of good shots. Boom. Oof. Left hand by Melanie. Just after that, the fight started between Zubachev and Cranston. So penalties will be assessed with two minutes 36 seconds remaining. Statistics for this Canada Soviet series provided by Hewlett Packard. The personal portable computer. There you see it, eight to four. So penalties are being assessed on the Soviet players and the Canadian players. Looks like a couple of five minutes for fighting and a couple of two minutes for roughing, I suppose. Melamby, number 19 for Canada against Anfurov, two minutes each and five minutes each to Cranston and Zabrilchev. 
That's just a pretty good scrap we saw there. It's all over for uh, Cranston and Zabrilchev, at least for this evening. They'll be finished for the night with two minutes, 30 seconds on the clock. Just had a look there, the David off there. Well, here are the penalties we'll talk about in a second. Number 18, Vladimir Zabrilchev, a match penalty to number 21, Mikhail Anferov, two minutes for roughing. To Team Canada, number nine, Dennis Cranston, a match penalty. And number 19, Scott Mellonby, two for roughing. Time of the penalty is 17-24. We apologize for transmission difficulties between the Saddle Dome and our center in Toronto. We trust that we'll be able to rectify the picture problems as soon as possible. Two minutes, 36 seconds to play in the final period. Eight to four, the Moscow Dynamo leading Team Canada. And maybe as you look at this lineup tonight, Darcy, with all the changes, the players arriving late in the afternoon from Wisconsin and the University of Denver, might be a little bit uh, too much to ask of, uh, of the Canadian team to stay with the Soviets on, a, on an occasion like this one. Well, it's very difficult when you have new players coming in, not knowing each other, and expect to go out and play and play as a team. But I, I was down at a great game seven by the Maple Leaf Gardens, and I saw David off, and he wanted to win that game very badly, and they lost by a goal, and he's had his troops playing very well and very effectively tonight. Well, certainly after losing two in a row, you would expect the Soviets to be up and well prepared for this match. And with all the uh, changes on the Canadian team, without making too many excuses, there has not been a great deal of practice time for this Team Canada unit. Into the final three minutes. Each team with three skaters aside out there right now. After the penalties were assessed, out in front, and it's cleared by Ridley. Over on the left side, and Team Canada claiming it at the Soviet line. Played back for Curry Proft. Proft in across. This is Ridley. Ridley getting set. Dropped it back. Back for Ridley. Ridley still has it for Team Canada. Mike Ridley. Good display here. Never got a shot on net, though. Ridley still with a puck. Working very effectively with it. Finally, it's taken by Vazikov. But for all that, Ridley never got a shot on goal. Now Skirdak for the Soviets. Over on the left side for Variana. Variana over to the right side. And trailing into the play, Vazikov into the corner. Skirdak has it. Skirdak left it for Variana. Variana circling. Left it there for Vazikov. Vazikov. Losing it. And taking over for Canada, Proft. 126 to play, final period. Center ice area, Darren Lowe lost the puck to Glushenkov. He's into the corner, working against Victor Passa. And the Canadians, Darren Lowe comes up with it. Ahead on the left side, player turned the wrong way as Lowe. We got Boldaris out there. He must love this three-on-three -three action. All kinds of open ice for him to make moves and handle the puck. Here he goes. No, no, that's Golikov. I'm sorry. Golikov going in. The save by Trakalo. He's been big on some breakaway saves. Golikov foiled that time. Less than a minute to play. Third period for Canada. This is Clark. And across the Soviet line. Tried to slip it out in front. Now, Boldaris. Slowing it right down, Balderas. Nifty little pass, didn't work. As he tried to get it over for Glushenkov, now for Team Canada. A chance for Victor Passa. Passa going in, gets ready to take the shot. Oh, cleared it out in front. And a good save by Baselnuk for the Soviets. 25 seconds to play, Balderas once more. And working right in, the shot track alone stood his ground. This is Scott Mellonby. Mellonby dropped it back. And should have fired at that time. Seven seconds left. It looks like it's going to end eight to four as the Soviets take control in the center ice area. Balderas down across the line, and that'll be it as the Moscow Dynamo win their. A packed house at Madison Square Garden on their way to the subways, the trains, and the roads of New York City. Rangers win it in overtime tonight, 5-4 over the New Jersey Devils. That's it. We're out of time, and we've got to go. The NHL on USA has been brought to you by Strohs and Strolite, official sponsors of the National Hockey League. By Toyota's exciting cars and trucks for 1985. Toyota invites you to see them at your local dealer. 
by Mobile One Synthetic Motor Oil. You can't buy better engine protection. And by Chevrolet, who invites you to see today's Chevy, drive today's Chevy, live today's Chevy. Don't forget, tomorrow night we'll be with you again, this time from historic Boston Garden, as the NHL's most surprising team, the Los Angeles Kings, take on the Boston Bruins. Game time is set for 7.30 Eastern time on USA. Until then, for Al Albert, Gary Green, and Dan Kelly, who will return tomorrow, I'm Al Troutwick saying maybe we should use videotape replays for the official...